so far the week's been pretty good, kind of good, kind of not, kind of whatever, kind of meh. And the weirdest part is, is that swing sets are the most dangerous damn thing in the playground. Go figure. You know what? Fuck Mondays and Tuesdays. And Wednesdays while we're at it too. So basically the only plan for this week is to not get sick or my stomach hasn't calmed down. And it's not horrible, but it's still annoying. Like waking up on Monday and realizing that riding around on the seawall at well, 6 o'clock in the morning would be a bad idea. So that's pretty much the week plan, which is kind of a small plan, but for me it's still a eh plan. Been doing a lot of thinking on what's been going on in my life lately. And the only thing I can think of is the fact that when I was a kid, I was really bored all the time. I would always wish for adventure. That was the thing. I didn't know what, but I wanted some sort of adventure. I'm a big believer in fate. Not in the classical sense. And that's pretty much all I can say about that. I don't really know an easy way to explain it. But I don't think that everything in life is just supposed to happen the way it happens. That's the only thing that can make sense to me about what's going on in my life the way it's going right now. If that made any sense, let me know. And in completely random news, there's a game that me and a friend of mine are working on, which I really need to actually start working on. So that's it, one of the other plans for the week. Sitting here thinking, I've suddenly realized why my stomach is the way it is. It's pure stress. I mean, you think about it, I moved here three months ago, and everything's been kind of up and down since then. And right now, I'm not sure which way it's going. And that's kind of what's stressing me out so much about things. A couple of days ago, I got a really good piece of advice from one of my friends, and I'll put the full description in the sidebar. But uh, if you try to focus on some sort of abstract concept like balance, it'll, it will never happen. Think, things will never be perfect. Instead, what you have to do is focus on the little things you can do and see to make, make things work for the moment, because that's all you can control. And I think that's one of the reasons why I started doing this, uh, this stuff. It's something I can control to a certain extent. And it's something that I can learn how to mold into something else. Definitely one of the best parts of this weekend actually was hanging out with a friend of mine from high school last night. Sat around, playing video games, drinking, and talking. And it was nice. I hadn't had a night like that in quite a while and got to see just how much work actually went into Grand Theft Auto 4, which is also nice. Pretty much the only main goals for this week is obviously de-stressing, getting up at 6, getting out there and doing the bike ride, getting it back at a proper time, and actually working out. And then getting to work at a proper time as well. The other nice thing about this week is I figured out that I can actually walk to work in, I think, 35 minutes. One of the things I've been thinking about is why I'm doing this at all. Part of it, if nothing else, is just to get things off my chest. Another part of it is, why not? It's there, I can do it, it's kind of fun. Well, no, actually it is quite fun. It's enjoyable to do all the weird, geeky little things behind the scenes of cutting up the video, re-slicing things, and putting stuff back together in a way that kind of makes sense. I don't know. People are made of pickle. The manga series I just finished is Lone Wolf and Cub. Uh, it's 28 volumes, each volume is about 300 pages, I think with the slow line that I was doing, probably took me about two and a half, three years to get through it all. I mean, I'd buy like one or two every month or so, and yeah. If you like comics, or if you want to give Japanese manga comics a try, this would be a good first series. I mean, it's huge, and it's in-depth, and it's... Pretty crazy, but it's just a really damn good series. It starts, travels, and ends very, very well. So that would be my recommendation is that one. Now this one's kind of funny actually. Uh, the Red Badge of Courage. I don't know how many people have actually read this thing. This book was written in... Uh, we'll, we'll say the 1880s. Yeah, sure, why not. Um, my dad bought me this book when I was a kid. And that copy is still sitting somewhere in my old home. And for some reason I just didn't ever want to read it. And basically I saw this book sitting on a bookstore shelf for three bucks. 
And I said, what the hell? I should finally just read the damn thing and see what he was talking about. So far, it's a good book. It definitely shows its age and the writing style. I think I'm going to have to finish it before I can really state how much I enjoyed it or not. But the first line is absolutely killer. The cold passed reluctantly from the earth, and the retiring fogs revealed an army stretched out on the hills resting. I don't know, I really like that line. I mean, it sets it up well and does put a creepy but nice image in your head. I'm a big fan of the show Top Gear on the BBC in the UK, and I found a bit ago that one of the hosts, Jeremy Clarkson, wrote a book called The World According to Clarkson. Pretty much it's a collection of editorials he's written for a few newspapers. And what I like about it the most is that it's got, still got some good tidbits about life on it. So that would be one to pick up as well. One of the other things that popped into my head about this was remembering when I was a kid, it was elementary school, and I don't remember the exact details, but I remember working with one of the teachers, Mrs. Penner. There was a bunch of my classmates, and it was some activity or some project where we were all doing a little videotape thing. I mean, for those of you who actually remember the VHS tapes, and the huge cameras that would go along with them. All I remember was I was really comfortable in front of the camera. Yeah, actually I was. I don't know if it was the fact that I was more comfortable with the camera or if I was more comfortable with myself. And I mean, you can't go back. You can't regret what's happened. And you can't change yourself to that. You can only go forward. That's kind of the part of life. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, is I'm not trying to go back, but I'm trying to bring something from then to here. Basically, I'm trying to get more comfortable with myself. Because weirdly enough, as crappy as things were for me back then, I think I had more confidence. <laughs>